What's up guys, Code Elephant here. This video is going to show you how to rip game files from Wizard101. Uh, for this video, for this tutorial, I'm going to I'm going to be using a program called Ninja Ripper, which is um hold on, let me go to my <laughs> where I installed it. I'll include a link to the program in the description of this video for you to download and install as well as maybe a um, tutorial on how to install it if you don't quite know how to do that but uh, this is where I installed it too, I'm going to use the 86 version and once you've installed the program go ahead and launch it um, so once you launch it you'll get this little window and what you want to do first is tell it which game you want to uh, you want to rip game files from so for this, uh, if you don't know where Wiz is actually installed, you go to your C drive and go to Program Data, the Program Data folder, not Program Files, Program Data. Make sure it says Data, that's very important. And um, scroll down to Kings Isle Entertainment and go to Wizard101 and select the XE of the application. And once you've done that, you want to set it to D3D9 wrapper. The reason we do this is because Wiz is actually, um, it's on the DirectX 9 engine, so we want Ninja Ripper to recognize uh, the game engine as it is in order to rip game files from it. So you'll set your directory right here, the same thing you've chosen for here. And um, the output directory is where you want it to save all of the files for. Um, I suggest, uh, let's see, what I did is I went to the same folder as the game and I went into the bin folder and I just uh, selected the bin folder because, uh, and then it creates, wherever you tell it to it creates a file, or a folder, excuse me, called Ninja Ripper and then inside that is all of the files that it rips. So. Once we've selected that directory, wherever you want it to rip the files from, you can even select your desktop if you really wanted to. And um, once we've done all that, can configured it how we wanted it, go to settings. Um, on this screen, all you really care about is all. Uh, unless you wanted to rip textures only, then you could set a hotkey to do that. But to rip everything that is in sight, um, do this hotkey and set it to whatever you want. I'm going to set it to F3. I usually have it on F10, but that's the same button that uh, the recording software I use uses to stop the recording, so <laughs> I have to change it for this tutorial. Okay, once you've done that, um, and make sure you've actually selected the correct application here and the game engine here. Once you've done everything, click the Run button and it will launch the game. And uh, I'm going to move Ninja Ripper to my second monitor over here. And once you log in here. Alright, once you're in game. I'm going to go ahead and skip the game opening. Alright, so once you're in game, you want to find a place uh, that you want to rip the game files from. So if you wanted to do it, for example, from this character creation screen, it would rip all the meshes and textures for every one of these characters displayed, as well as the background and the user interface and the furniture and everything. Everything that you see here, you would get the meshes and textures for each individual aspect of the screen. But I don't really want to rip files from the character creation screen, um, so let's go in-game and actually go to a place where we want to rip game files from. And uh, for this I usually use a relatively small area so it isn't too confusing because uh, when you it doesn't exactly label each mesh and texture I mean it'll give you a mesh file and then usually that file correlates with the number of the texture name uh, that goes with it, usually, but sometimes it's all offset and confusing, so the less t uh, files we rip at a time, the better. Obviously, we don't want to do it in the commons. I mean, every one of these characters is just, it's too much, uh, too much of a large area. So what I'm going to do is actually go to my dorm room, make sure I don't have a K 
castle one. And let's go do that. Alrighty, so this is my dorm room. It's uh, pretty bland, but uh, let's go out here. This is what I've done with my dorm room. I have no idea why I created this, but whatever. Um, so pretty much what we want is to rip files to create this dorm room animation and texture uh, program. So we're going to rip files with the key that we've selected from Ninja Ripper, which is F3. Now, once we've done that, we can we can go ahead and press our hotkey to rip all the files. And what it will do is, the game will look like it's crashed. It will stop responding for a few seconds or even a minute, depending on how fast your processor is. But um, it'll freeze like that. I have a pretty good... Uh, graphics card and processor so it'll probably yeah it's already done so we can go ahead and go into our folder that we've selected um, where to rip the files to so it'll be right here and it'll be the most recent one so that's this one right here well it's actually this is like a browse window for the program I don't want to use this so We'll just go in File Explorer. There we are. We're right here, and the most recent one would be this one. And uh, it'll tell you like a log text file. Um, it's being used because Ninja Ripper is still open. Let's actually close this since we've already ripped the pro uh, the files and they're in a folder. We can go ahead and close both of those programs. So now we have. Um, a log text file if you wanted to look at that just if there are any like error messages or anything like that um, there's a log file and here are all of the mex the meshes are dot rip files and the textures are dot dds files um, if you have photoshop i'm pretty sure by default photoshop cs6 opens dds files on its own so we can go ahead and go to open and um, make sure this is the right. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, there we go. Now we can open. Um, see, what is the first texture that it looked at? It's the sky. The sky in the background. It's probably the biggest one, is why. Um, yeah, that's the sky texture for the dome around the background of the uh, dorm room. Um, exterior place so what's the second texture it's just white sometimes we'll just get filler textures like that that are just uh, nothing no idea why let's go to a random uh, let's go to 17 there we have the uh, castle block floor texture I believe and um, yeah so you just get a bunch of textures uh, 59 49 I don't even know what that is but um Let's actually go in our mesh editing software, which I use I use 3ds Max 2016. You can use Blender or whatever you want. But I'm going to use 3ds Max 2016 just because I know uh, that I can import the .rip files using that program. Alright, so the rest of this video is pretty much up to you if you want to watch it or not. It's pretty much just going to be me um, opening all the mesh files with 3ds Max and just kind of messing around uh, trying to find which one's which and that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is start with a just original new template. Let's see here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I always like to do that so our perspective window is a little bit bigger. Alright, so what we want to do is actually, I have a plugin for 3ds Max that kind of lets me um, import things myself, so how I do that is go to scripting, run script, there we go! It's a Ninja Ripper um, actual plugin, so it's designed to work with Ninja Ripper. What we do is uh, click the import icon if we can. What's going on? 
I have no idea. This thing's weird. This whole thing's weird. No. What the bloody hell? Okay, there we go. Ninja Ripper importer. I don't know. This whole layout thing's weird. Um, so what we want to do is go to import. Um, oh, jeez. Chimney. Okay, it's already set to import a foot for some reason. Okay, let's see if we can, uh, let's erase all these. Blah. Okay. Okay, let's see. This is not the right folder. Ninja Ripper in this one. Okay, here we are. Okay, let's do this. So we take a mesh file. What's the first mesh it looks at? That's probably the sky, the dome, uh, sphere shape of the outside, you know, the sky. That's how Wiz sets up their sky boxes. Uh, they're just domes. Let's go to actually 17 and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's going to be the railing for the castle blocks that I put up. Uh, pretty cool. That's, they ripped that, so that's nice. Let's go ahead and erase that and see what the other ones are. I'm trying to find my character. I don't know. Usually does it around the 50s, I think, uh, when I do it in the dorm room. Yeah, I don't know what that is. What is that? No idea. I think it might be a piece of gear, actually. Yeah, because it's uh, three bones. So usually uh, when it imports three bones and then a mesh, it's usually a piece of gear. So that's pretty nice. So now we know it's around the 80s. But... So as you can see, I ripped all of the relevant files and kind of made my character and the uh, weapon in the mesh editing software. And um, as you can tell by the numbering of the parts of the mesh and the files, they're kind of random. 45 is the weapon, 46 through uh, I think 50 is like just the hands and the hair and the head and stuff. And then uh, 51 through, or no, 51, 52 are the legs, and then 82 through whatever is like just the clothes. And the hat for some reason didn't come with the texture, but I'm sure I could actually fix that if I went to the material editor and assigned it a texture. Um, assigned it the texture that it's supposed to be assigned uh, if I went and looked through the textures and found which one but I mean this tutorial is just like the basics the bare minimum uh, I'm not really gonna <laughs> spend too much time on that but uh, I'm gonna save this for later just in case I decide um... so that there you go and uh, some of the other things that I've kind of done with uh, the uh, with the ripped files is kind of made cool poses with my characters like this. Actually, make it consistent colors. That's the one that I like to do. Because if you make it look realistic, then it's all like shaded and shadowed and dark like that. And uh, shaded kind of makes these weird streaks on the edges. And consistent colors just kind of gets rid of all that and just gives you what the game would show it as. And um, for some reason, all the transparent parts of the textures, like around the feather and the cufflings and the edges of the cape, instead of being transparent, they're actually white. That's just how uh, 3ds Max treats the textures for now. You can really open the material editor and kind of change little minute things like that. But yeah, this is basically me dual wielding um, Ruby Blade of the Forest, which is this and uh, Heart of Ember and Ash, which is the Shadow Forged Fire Weapon from Chrysalis. And then I have, um, I also went and uh, made a, um, let's see, where is it? Yeah, this is it. It's like a, uh, whatever. It's a, um, wow, that really messed up, didn't it? <laughs> That's hilarious. But, yeah, the arms kind of messed up. I don't know why they did that. Uh, but it was supposed to be my Wiz character wearing the the uh, Black Worm's coat. Just the arms messed up. Nothing else did. That's very strange. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what that was supposed to be. Anyways, uh, that's it for this tutorial, pretty much. Um, I'll see you guys in a future tutorial. Link in the description, once again, for Ninja Ripper and, um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. See you guys next video. Peace out. <laughs>